Welcome back to Kicking It With Cold Caves. I got two special guests for me today. My dear friend, Dan Fleshman. How are you? Just happy to be here. And we got Mike, AK, the real Tarzan. Hello. Big fan, my guy. Thank you, brother. Before we get in this pod, man, I saw your shoes. And I, let's talk about the hell, like what happened with them? <laughs> well, I mean, I give them a, a nine out of 10. You know? Nine? Yeah. They, uh, they fit good. I beat them up. I beat all my shoes up. Man. So if, if they can last, I'll keep wearing you them. You changed the whole color on those. Yeah, the soles all bent out of shape. So, so what happens when you wrestle with ostriches and snakes? Yeah, I mean, I got tagging <laughs> ostriches in these. Did you really? Yeah. I, I think I ran away from a buffalo in these two <laughs> a couple of months ago. That's crazy. That was crazy. It sounds silly, but then you see the video, like, oh, he really did. Yeah. <laughs> he really did do it. I'm surprised the sneaker um, community didn't try to cancel you while we're doing that to the <laughs> Travis. Oh, everybody in the comments, like, bro, yeah. change your shoes. Why are you wearing? I'm like, bro. Your shoes, wear your shoes. What else are you supposed to do with them? Yeah, they all get, all get dirty. That's I crazy. probably have five pairs of clean shoes. Damn. That's yeah. why he was trying to buy shoes when we were trying to start the podcast. Right, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going shopping for sneakers right after this episode. <laughs> uh, before, so, I know you guys have some nice sneakers on today. What do you got? Uh, what are you rocking today? Um, I mean, you know the names better than I do. Dunk Miz, like the yeah. serial version. Yeah. Good shoe. I, I, like, I like what you did. I like what you put I together. Had to, I had to dress up for you. You know, <laughs> can't walk in a cool case with like a plain black shirt on. Dan's got a vape uh, shirt on. He's a hype beast. Um, so, let's talk about you guys. You guys recently... Um, let's talk about the Temecula project. Yep. You want to elaborate on that? Uh, so we bought a 26 acre ranch in Temecula. Uh, eight acres of it is dedicated to animal sanctuary. So Tarzan's been building what's called the wild jungle. Okay. The wild jungle has 85 animals we've rescued so far. Camels, ostriches, zebras. He'll, he'll be explained a lot better. Another portion of it's like for military training. There's no real guns, but like airsoft guns, military training, obstacle courses, things like that. We built an ATV course, a lake, a wedding venue, uh, event space. Wow. And then we also live there. And then we have a bunch of horses and equestrian training that goes on there. What inspired you to do this? So remember, so random. remember when the whole country shut down in 2020 and everybody's like, I'm going to go out and live like in the middle of nowhere in case the whole world go crazy. Yeah. So I moved out to the middle of nowhere in case the whole world goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I just bought it and did it for real. And so my wife's obsessed with animals. So I wanted her to have animals. Tarzan had already had five acres out in Miami and he was already doing this. And so I was like, hey, what about California? The weather's amazing out here. And I just you know, convinced him to come out here and we'll make a content machine. And so now he's getting 200 million views a month wow. doing animal content. And we have a whole crew of videographers and uh, the rest is history. Man. So what kind of content are you producing right now? Is it just strictly with just all animals and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, all animal content. I mean, every now and I do some fitness stuff for like finance. and learn a lot from finance for a new podcast called Money Mondays. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, you know, the so hard of our whole platform is animals and I like culture too, like tribes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah. It's so, bo cool. so both of you guys reside on that 20 acre yep. lot land? Yep. Wow. It lives 40 yards from me. 40 yards? <laughs> <laughs> so what's next with that? You just want to keep building upon upon that? Or? Yeah, we've, we've spent over three and a half million dollars in construction just since August, just like 100K, 150K a week of just construction to like mm -hmm. four different crews building. And so we're adding a section for giraffes right now, um, which is almost done. We got 14 foot metal gates for them and a retaining wall. We're gonna add four houses so that your back patio will be the drafts. Wow! And so that's that's in process right now. It's can seven, can seven the general public come visit? Or like, how, how is it set up right now? So they can come for private tours. We're not open to the public because we live there, so we don't want people just like showing up, rolling deep, and just like showing up anytime they want. Um, but they can book private tours, and so we do that. We do birthday parties and things like that, and then ultimately we'll expand. We're trying to buy the neighbors and try to really expand this place to be like. I'm gonna live there forever, and he's, you know, like yeah. as long as I can keep him, he's gonna live there. You don't realize Temecula is, <laughs> don't is very beautiful. Like I went oh, yeah. there like a year or two ago for a business meeting, and like beautiful winery. Yep. This is a peaceful area. This was a winery, yeah. And so I removed the winery because I didn't want to be in competition with the 65 wineries in the area. Yeah. I wanted them to look at us not as competition, but as somewhere they could send families and their kids and mm. throw events at our place, rather than like, oh, we're not gonna send people there to visit the animals when they have a winery. We don't have a winery. Well, that's crazy. I don't so, want to be in that business. So outside of that, what, what is your day-to-day -day consist of? I know you're juggling multiple blends. You you have a lot of businesses. So the fast forward version, I have a social media agency. Uh, we spent around $60 million with brands, products, and mobile apps. We paid 3,500 influencers last year. 3,500 uh, million? 3,500 influencers oh. last year. We spent around $60 million with influencers. Wow. Um, I have a acai bowl chain. We have 60 locations called Everbowl. We opened oh, one. Oh, you're part of Everbowl? Yeah. Isn't Drew Brees a part of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm very familiar with them. Yep. So y'all are killing that. Yep. I started, I invested in the company like four or five years ago. I, then I bought 17 of the stores with some of my friends. 
Now there's 60 locations and we open one new one every six days. Wow. Drew Brees put a couple million in and then he bought 150 locations. So he's really deep into it with us. Yeah. Um, then I have cards and coffee, the sports card stores. How's it going? Um, building a full national chain. We have nine stores now. Um, opening one new store every six to eight weeks. Try to build a full national chain. Obviously do the online breaking as well, but the the chain store is the real concept behind it. Um, how many stores do you want to plan on opening up? As many as I can. As many as I can. And you kept it strictly the sports cards. I remember back in the day we were talking about like transitioning is uh, adding more sneakers to it. Are you planning on doing that or? So we have sneakers in the Salt Lake City store. We have sneakers in the Jacksonville store, um, but we don't have it in all the stores because mm. a lot of cities don't need it. Like at my LA store, why would I do sneakers when there's cool kicks? Mm -hmm. Like there's no there's no lacking of shoes and mm -hmm. sneakers in in LA, but in Salt Lake City. It's, it's lacking. lacking, right? Mm -hmm. Jacksonville, Florida, I'll put sneakers. So like we have a dope wall of sneakers in both those cities, but I'm not going to do it every city. Like mm -hmm. we're in Vegas. We just opened a store with Marshawn Lynch inside of Beast Mode at the Mandalay Bay. There's, okay. no, sh there's no shoes there mm -hmm. because there's really cool store shoe stores. It's 30 feet away, 40 feet away. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to compete in that market where people are really good at that game. I'm, I want to be really good at sports cards and Pokemon. That's mm -hmm. my game. Where do you see it? Obviously, the market's pretty down. You know, sneakers, sports cards, watches, cars. Has it affected any of your businesses? So the, the prices are down, but the volume's not. The sports cards, mm -hmm. I mean, we're busy, 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 and we can't keep Pokemon to save our lives. Like, I'm buying 50K, 100K, 50K, 100K every day of Pokemon just to, like, keep up, and I can't get enough direct from the manufacturer, so I'm constantly... It's a struggle. Like, that's what I was texting about right the second. Hey, get 80K here. Get 30K here. Like, yeah. we're buying left and right sports cards and Pokemon from anywhere we can. Um, so, yes, the prices are down, but the volume is definitely not down. See, that's what I was telling people. A lot of, you uh, told you a lot of uh, consignment stores for sneakers mm -hmm. are shutting down, but I always tell people, it's like, the demand is still there. Of course. A uh, shoe that was maybe 300 six months ago might be 250 now, but if you can just price it and buy it at a cheaper price and just still make that still margin, mm -hmm. 30, 40%, whatever your profit margin is, you're still, it's still, of course, people are making money. Yeah, our margin will, will never change. We always make between 20, 30%. That way the the customer, the fan, they're they're happy and they're getting a fair price. But whether, if let's say a card is $1,000, we're going to charge twelve to 1300 If it's $600, we're going to charge seven, 800. We're just going to make the same margin no matter what. I actually like it when it's a little bit less. It's too expensive. It got too expensive for a while mm -hmm. during the heyday. And it wasn't affordable for kids and families to go buy cards. Now when it's 200 and 500 and 700 and 100 and 350 bucks, they can buy it. Mm. Two grand, three grand, four grand. That's hard to buy. Mm. And then I know you talked about your agency for social media. How did you get started with that? Because I know that's how you, you first started off, right? Yeah. That's, how, did, how did that go about? So I started that a decade ago. Um, after online poker, I had a poker site with Dan Bilzerian and DJ Steve Aoki. And, and poker got shut down in America. I so I lost a $65 million company overnight. Wow. I was like, now what do I do? <laughs> right? I went from having an energy drink. It's a poker site and then all of a sudden poker is not in America anymore. And so I decided I'm never gonna have all my eggs in one basket again. And so I started angel investing in a bunch of companies. And so I angel invested in 43 companies since then. I started the social media agency. I started speaking at events. It all happened from that bad loss of like, I should be crying about it. Instead, it set me up with all these other things and all these mm. other businesses. And so the social media agency was because I was paying some influencers to post about some of my investments. Yeah. And I realized there was no agency, there was no way to do it easily, and nobody knew what the price was. It was like the Wild Wild West. And so I was paying for tweets, I was paying for MySpace posts, I was paying wow. for like, that's how back how long ago it was. And then it just kind of evolved where they all started referring people to me. So all of a sudden, I'm doing I'm driving to Kim Kardashian's house with a Fashion Nova dress, and I'm dropping off Sugar Bear hair at Kylie's house, and I'm dropping Fit Tea at Amber Rose's house, mm. and I'm going to see Scott Disick with, like, I'm dropping off products at their houses, because. There was no way to do it back then. Mm -hmm. You just literally drove there or shipped it to them and they would hold up a product. Yeah. And so it all started there where once I started doing the first few dozen posts and people would see, they would refer me Fashion Nova, Pretty Little Thing, Boohoo, Nasty Gal, Fit Tea, all those initial brands that got big on social. As I was doing them, I kept getting more and more referrals from celebrities and from brands. Wow. That's great. So how did you guys get connected? I know you're one of the biggest <laughs> creators in the world. How did you guys get connected? Same way. Same thing. I, like five, six years ago, we were doing seven different pet brands running budget six figures a month for different CBD brands and pet brands. And so obviously this guy was getting a zillion views. And so he, I was reaching out to him and then we became friendly. And then when he started working on the Ignite campaign and traveling with Bilzerian and doing, oh, yeah. he was doing content with them, we got closer and closer because we were running the Ignite campaign also. Wow. 
How did you get started? Where's your backstory before the real Tarzan and before being one of the biggest creators in the world? How did you get started to where you are today? I mean, I've been doing animals my whole life, you know. Where are you so, originally from? I'm from New England, so like, you know, like where Connecticut's at? Yeah. I'm from Rhode Island, uh, smallest state in the United States. It's tiny, you know. Um, but I started up there with my family. Uh, I moved down to Atlanta in like 99. Okay. Uh, my mom just moved. And then uh, I was in Atlanta from like first grade to 12th grade. Did a year of college there. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to Miami. <laughs> Went to Miami. I was doing the same thing in Atlanta with animals, going yeah. to school, you know, just typical elementary school, yeah. middle school, high school life. Um, but I was like head of my zoo club. I was like one of the top leading kids in uh, school in chemistry, biology, physics, earth science, botany, you name it. I'm, yeah. I'm doing it all. Um, also play football and wrestling and stuff like that. But when I got to Miami, I seen like South Beach, alligators, iguanas, pythons, the Everglades, fishing, Latinas, you know. So I was like, I'm not going back to Atlanta. Damn. And I started working in zoos over there, um, volunteering in different spots, working in school districts with kids, bringing them animals and yeah. like being a science teacher. And then I started like studying social media years ago. I was like, man, I should do social media next because I was just like, I was in a little hermit, you know, hermit crab shell, going to work, going to the gym, going home, no social life, no online life. And I saw a couple of my homies posting about social media and I started following a couple of people. I was like, bro, I can make some shit like that, mm. you know? And then I just went for it and like started going viral. I left my job and like maybe like 20 days later started going viral. Wow. And from there, I went from like 3,000 followers to... Five million followers in a year. Wow! And uh, it's just what was the what, what, the platform you blew up on was at first? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram started, um, and then I started trending on Twitter the same year for like three days. Snapchat was going off, you know, but I didn't even know anything about any of these other things. Yeah, you know, I was just still learning, and uh, yeah, man, it just kickstarted me to keep going. Then I got addicted to YouTube for long, long format yeah, content. That, that's where our main focus is, yeah, long yeah. form. So it was cool, man, going from, uh, I, have a, I have a million plus on YouTube. It took a while to get there. It's way harder to get YouTube is, I always tell people that YouTube, if you can go viral on YouTube, that's the hardest platform because yeah. that algorithm to crack, is it's tough. It's tough. Like we're at 1.6 million followers, but it took us like many years. Yeah. Um, and that audience is hard. Like having somebody sit there on a couch and watch you for 10 minutes is, that, is yeah. different than just swirling on a, yeah. a Instagram reel or a, a TikTok. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, it's crazy. So what, what, what's your next plan? Like uh, you've conquered the social media. Is like, are you, are you looking at like a TV show or like what, what's next for you? I mean, TV shows fun and all, you know, but like I really want to get into branding, you know, branding products like animal products. So anything like pet food cat food dog food smart you know bird food fish food fish filters all these people are buying pet food and pet products every single day so if i have a wide variety a wide plethora of videos that i'm educating the world on animals why can't i educate you about your goldfish or your cat or your dog even the same animals i have in my house i have goldfish i have cats i have dogs you know so if i can sell you a product that i'm also feeding my animals i think people will buy it you know um, um, the, the media aspect. we're going to have to hear is the <laughs> manufacturers for it's called wild jungle for yeah. Pet foods and pet products. That's a massive uh, market yeah. too. And your audience is that niche audience of these uh, pet lovers. Yeah. That's smart. So, That's yeah. smart. T TV aspect is fun, but like I, I dumped millions of dollars into my YouTube channel to make my own TV shows without telling, without someone telling me what to do or, or to fake something, boss. you know? Because sometimes you get into reality TV, they want to stage stuff. And then that's how your, your credibility from I wouldn't say street cred, but you yeah. know, I got I got street cred in the jungle, you know. So when I go there, like, oh, this guy ain't this guy ain't staying at my house. Well, I don't know this guy. This guy's fake, yeah. you know. So when when I make these videos, I, I keep them like raw Authentic. and real as possible. People are like, holy shit, this is wow. good content, yeah. you know. So one day TV show, but I gotta be with the right terms, you 100%. know, because. I don't want to do no fake stuff. That's crazy. That's crazy. And are you both, you guys are teaming up with the the the, the food. Oh yeah, yeah. The pet, yeah. Pet stuff. He knows. He, this is a genius. Everything about genius. all that stuff. Really. I want to com I want to uh, commend you on uh, staying humble and modest with all the work you've done because it's so inspiring to everyone. But you, how you speak and still come off to everyone, still so, you know, day one, so modest yeah, and humble, sure. not really like arrogant or anything. Yeah, and we sure. know the amount you mass, you know, help a lot of companies reach a certain level. So just big ups for that because it, it could be hard once you like reach a certain level. Of, I've seen it like people like reach yeah. a certain level of vir um, uh, virality and 
they start like switching up their sure. model or their they stop being as right. as humble. So big ups to that because it can be hard. Because you're eating, my, you're making, you make, my, my you're, goal, you're really the the angel investor. My, my goal is to help everyone replicate whatever part that they like. If they okay. like when I do charity, I want them to do that. They like when I do clothing or food food restaurants or cards. And my goal is to show people what they can do. And, and, and is it and is, is it advantage to have your hands in so many different pots versus focusing on one like niche? So I think I had PTSD after losing a big company overnight. Yeah. You know, like we were deep. I was doing seven figures a month yeah. with five employees. Wow. Sheesh. And all of a sudden, just like, boom, it's over. It's like, wow, I don't want that. I like, I have a little bit of PTSD when it comes to that part. And so that's why I'm spread out in that fashion. But each company is run by a different quarterback. Yeah. Right. While Jungle, Tarzan runs it. Mm -hmm. Sports card store, I got a guy running it. My mastermind events, there's a guy running that. Acai Bowls, obviously there's a team running that. Every business I have from agencies, there's someone in particular that's the quarterback running that operation. Yeah, someone that's like, you know, could really handle yes. the task. So you're basically like Phil Day Jackson. Day. <laughs> Phil Jackson of the of the three P Lakers. My favorite coach of all time. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you and you uh, comment you how consistent you've been over years. I've been seeing your your content probably like uh, eight years ago, six years ago. And you still remain consistent as Thank far you, as you know, literally facing your fears <laughs> with um, and it's real authentic content. You can tell it's not staged, like you say, or reality TV. Not. <laughs> it's super real. I'm like. At first, it was like, all right, is this kind of cap a little bit? Is he like, yeah. is this really a, a lion in him? <laughs> but big ups to you because staying consistent, consistent like that and still giving people what they want, as, you already reached a certain level of success. Yep. Some people chill and like dial back on it, but you, it's like you going even harder now. Yeah. Because um, I love it, man. Like I said, it's all I do, you know? Like, it's like passion, passion about yeah, it. Passion, yeah, yeah, passion, you know? It's like, and seeing other people passionate about what they do, surrounding yourself with them and their teams and seeing how their businesses are going to the next level. It's like, it's like lighting a fire in yeah. you, you know, because you get around the rest of the pack. Yeah. You don't want to be the, the, you know, you don't want to be the runt. No, yeah, you exactly. Like, oh, I, want like a, high, I want a big company. Yeah, you, you, know? you, so you, you, you know, you, you group yourself up with certain people that reach a certain level of success. You want to keep driving. Yeah. That's why we always say all the time, your circle is key yeah. or even people you're connected with is key sure. because they motivate you. You never want to be the smartest out of that circle. Yeah. It pushes yeah. you more when there's other people around you that are doing better than you. Yeah. Then it rubs off and you're like, all right, I need to work harder. Yep. And, and I was telling your, conversa your conversations are different. It is mm -hmm. like if you if you're hanging out with your friends that are just smoking weed or just skating, you're talking about smoking weed and skating. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes mm -hmm. it yeah. can be fun, but that's not going to get you to the next it's level. Get you nowhere, yeah. If you're hanging out with like eight real estate guys, what are you going to talk about? Real yeah. estate, yeah, that's right? Passion, you're, just, yeah. you're talking about two people on a record label. What are you talking about? How to run a record label, mm -hmm. right? And so just surrounding yourself with people that are moving and shaking. It's not that you have to get rid of your friends or get rid of people, but mm -hmm. like. There has to be a time and place for like the hangout friends and like I get it. moving life, yeah. moving forward in life friends. So mm -hmm. in these different rooms you're in, uh, how do you get in these different rooms? You see your, your hands is involved in so many different industries. Yeah. Do you like just, do people mostly reach out to you because of your success or you're more trying to just trying to find yourself in different rooms to, so to learn So a lot of things? it came from me throwing the events because I wasn't, I was, I was young, right? Yeah. I, start, I took my company public, I was 23. Yeah. And wow. so having like 40, 50, 60, 70 year olds working for you, it's an interesting dynamic because I'm a kid, right? Mm. And so I started throwing these events to like attract people so I could start networking. Okay. And so I would throw an event and I'd invite the business guys. The business guys would invite some athletes. I'd invite athletes. They want to meet the business guys. And all of a sudden the rappers would show up because they want to meet that. And the girls want to come because they want to meet the rap rappers, the athletes, and the business guys. It's how I go. Networking right? is literally your net worth and yep. your group of people you could bring around or the friends. Like we go out all the time. When we first moved here like seven years ago, we didn't know anybody. Right. We, it, was, it was a very competitive sneaker market. But our, our niche was going out and meeting like different like different places like you know hip hop crowd pop crowd uh, uh who with some athletes just get closer with them and it and it helps us because we have like maintained those relationships over time and they still support us still to this day and we still working harder for it so uh it makes sense that uh to to get in those different rooms you got to be open you got to be very social yep. some people want to create a business and you know dial back and just make the business talk for themselves but you still got to be super social. Like it's your day one super of like hands on. getting into. You got to be still so remain hands on. I've seen some companies, um, like there's their their owning team. They they take their hands off, mm -hmm. and then you see the decline off, so yep. quick. Yep. Yeah. So you never want to get too comfortable. It's the same thing with us. Like even when we were talking about consistency. Is like for us, we started our YouTube channel maybe five six years ago, but it didn't kick off till maybe during COVID. And then since then, we've really posted like three four times a week long form content, which is hard to keep of up course. with. Cause you run out of ideas and you're like, fuck, now what do I do? 
like in our industries, uh, how much more can you do with shoes? Same thing with you. How much more can you do with uh, animals? But you can, there's always more. Always you more. Yeah. To be creative. Always, yeah. yeah. And that's what. But but that's a lot of hard work. Now people don't realize that you, they might see the end result of a, a, a video you that took you maybe weeks to put together. But for them, it's a nine-minute video. Yep. Well, that's why most competitors fade away in every industry. Mm -hmm. You see the sneaker stores that fade away. You see the podcasts that fade away. Yeah. You see the clothing lines fade away. Like a lot of these guys just fade away. If you stay consistent, whether you're doing two, three, four pieces of content a week, or you're selling more clothing every week, or you're studying every week, or you're doing your real estate or fitness training, whatever you're doing, staying consistent, I promise you, that your competitors will fade away. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, sooner or later. Yeah, I even tell like young guys I know like. Um, you know, I've seen their hustle and then they get to a certain point when they're like, um, they're working for someone, but they want to become entrepreneurs yeah. and they think it's an easy way out. Like, I don't want to listen to anybody. So I want to get, I want to do my own business. But I tell them all the time, you being an entrepreneur, you have to have a high level initiative to get things done. You can't like, with direct, with working with someone, you get direction. You do that, what they ask right. you to do and you're done. But as like owning your own business or doing your own thing. You have to have so much initiative. You can't and like. You're always on calls. There's no nine to five. It's no, no nine more. to five. You're 24 <laughs> seven. You're working 365. 24 seven. Even when you're not in your side in your business, like when we're not inside in here, we feel like we're working still. Yeah. Like just because, because it's ours. And the, it the sounds face. easy. Like people are like, oh, I always want to start my own uh, business. Or I want to have my own LLC. Like it's a lot of work that goes behind this shit, man. Can, can, it's I, like, can I be blunt? Yeah, please. Most people aren't built to be an entrepreneur. They're not, yeah, bro, they're they, not. They don't realize like what you guys have to go through to pay the rent to pay the payroll to pay the overhead Expensive. the invoices oh the shipment's late oh the bare bricks too, took too long oh nike owes yeah, us this exactly. and this company owes us that and all oh, the shipments gonna be two months late and blah 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 the entrepreneur the ceo is dead last to get paid dead last yeah, let's be real clear even with the con even with like a re the recession and you know laying people off and like we, we, we were blessed enough to not have our employees get laid off and we had to take L's on ourselves personally yep. just because we wanted the business to maintain of course but a lot of people don't see that they think like you know, they my paycheck is number, my paycheck is automatic. Like, oh, I, you guys did twenty mil or mm -hmm. something in sales, but they don't realize that's just that's just sales. That's not profit. Right. You don't know what you're seeing after paying all the employees, buying the inventory, cost of goods are expensive, like stuff like that. You know, on your side, you see it, but it's not. And the number, the bottom number that they see is not. It's not what it really is. Right. <laughs> yeah, like margins, marketing, like even with you, like I know you put so much time, effort into the content, and you have to come out of pocket sometimes to like you know travel to these places and yourself, like yeah. you pay for like staff video and team it, it's, it's a lot going on instead of you just like you know wrestling a lion yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot going on behind it's the scenes business. yeah it's I mean, all business. buying food for all the animals you know exactly we didn't buying caging wiring you know what does that cost is that expensive i'm, I'm Bro, curious what i'm curious <laughs> what so and the, and, the, and the thing is if you when you when you work with animals and you have a lot of animals and you go i wouldn't say the cheap route you got to replace it and six months to a year. So you're going to be double, triple spending that. And the animal lives 30 years, 40 years. You're buying something new every single year, every Damn, couple months. Yeah. Wow. Let alone if it gets big, it's going to beat it up. You yeah. know? So if you buy stuff the right, it's going to be expensive at first. But then it will be way cheaper down the road. You know? So <laughs> I buy rats like people get Amazon shipments in for my snakes and lizards, right? <laughs> I have a deep Jeez. freezer full of rats. Really? But let the power go out and you don't know. Oh, yeah. All dead. Yeah, you a lot know, of risk behind it. They're dead, but they're just dead. Yeah, <laughs> dead, like you can't do nothing with them. Yeah. <laughs> I know that maintenance is uh, expensive. Is there anyone else in the industry that's doing something like this? Because I've seen like uh, an Instagram reptile something. It's like an hour away. Yeah, reptiles do. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Prehistoric. Jay, 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 Jay Prehistoric yeah. Pets. He's great. We're really close friends with him. He's oh, nice. he at the store yeah. for like 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Someone just sent me his page like last week. I was like, oh, this is interesting. I want to go check it out. Like, I think it's Santa Ana or something, right? He's an OG, man. He's been doing it so long. And I'll come to you too. Really? I come to your birthday parties. He's great. Oh wow! His content is dope. I'll tell you a funny story about him. Um, I don't know. It had to be like three years ago. He's like, man, how you getting? You know, how you blowing up so big on social media? I'm like, bro, you have an Android. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm like, bro, you have an Android. Like when you upload, it goes. No, it's good. It's clear. It's not. I'm like, not bro, a, stop. <laughs> not an iPhone. Use this phone. Get a brand new iPhone. You have anybody that has animals like Jay. You're in a gold mine of content. You can never run out of content. Unlimited to make. content. Yeah. Same thing with shoes. If you, if you, if I do these off whites or these Nike, there's dunks always a new these, release every week. Every single yeah. week you have new content. Yeah. This guy got you know 1,500 snakes, alligators, alligators, Sheesh. tortoises. I'm like, bro, make a video every week, three times a day. Post it, but use your iPhone. Yeah, invest wow. in iPhone, bro. My man <laughs> blew up. He's already yeah. killing it. Yeah, He's his been numbers doing it for are insane. A long time, but bro, he's just he's sitting in a gold mine. 
Yeah, but even even uh, the payback of that, it's it's less uh with the you know with the addition of iPhones and Instagram and social media. There's a lot of people that's been in the business, even with our business. A lot of people have been in this business or in a similar business, but they didn't have the certain tools, so they had to transform how they how they how they do things because it, the social media is bigger than everybody. So you can have a, a great business, but if you don't adapt to the times, you get left behind. So. Yep. It's uh, a fact, man. Yeah, it's, it, I see. I'm sorry, I see so many people that were OGs in the game before we got into it that just faded away because they didn't, uh, you know, adapt, adapt. To, yeah, to technology adapt to the and time, social yeah. media. Like social media is everything, but 99 percent of the people that shop with us literally come from our social medias. Yep, and that's how powerful it is. Because I always say this on a lot of the episodes is like everyone sells the same product, but people shop here because of the experience yeah. that they see on social media, and that's how we differentiate our business to any of our competitors because content is very important you know that like content is more important maybe than the actual product <laughs> sometimes right um so i wanted to switch gears a little bit i know you you told me in the past you had this one group where it's like a membership type of thing mm -hmm. where like you know speakers or mm -hmm. stuff like that how's that coming along yeah we just did one this weekend that's called the 100 million mastermind experience it's a hundred thousand dollars per person it's really a year sheesh. yeah there's a hundred people it's only allowed to be a hundred people times a hundred thousand each ten and mil yeah. Am I doing that yeah, math yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Um, I spend between one and two million per weekend, three weekends a year. I'm adding a fourth weekend now for 2024. And I make these big productions where I bring in celebrities, artists that I interview, but they're mm -hmm. a surprise. So we've had everybody, Shaq, Chris Jenner, Mark Wahlberg, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, Sheesh. Hulk Hogan, everybody. Mm -hmm. Crazy cast. Um, but nobody knows. Uh, nobody okay. knows. Like this weekend we had Busta Rhymes. Before that we had Ludacris. But nobody knows ever. Ashanti. And so I do that as a surprise because they've already paid to be in there. And I want it to be, even my dearest friends, I don't tell until the moment that celebrity walks on stage. Mm. The point of the group is less about me or the instructors, it's more about them networking. Because oh, yeah. everybody in the group has at least a $5 million company or higher, mm. mostly 10 to 50 million. And then the 22 instructors, they have a 100 million or higher company. So the people that are paying, the reason someone would pay 100K to be there is to network around. I have other groups that are 30K, 20K. Then there's sometimes people throw like, I'll throw like a one off weekend that's 5K or 10K. And then I have a free one called Elevator Night. Uh, I heard of that. Free. 51 times I've thrown this event for free. I'm throwing a one next weekend, number 52, Where for at? free, uh, Salt Lake City. And so on May 13th. And so like I throw that one for free because some people are like, oh, you have a 100K group. How am oh, I so ever so going to so get you, in? You throw that one for free and then they come to that. Then, then they'll find a way to make it over to the, the better yeah, events. Yeah. Well, over the course of time, they're either going to level up in their entrepreneur career yep. or they're going to keep coming to the free event, which is great, too. We do weekly coaching. The Money Mondays does a weekly coaching. So I have different levels so people can always learn, whether it's free, 200 bucks a month, 30 grand or 100 grand. I wanted to provide different ways for people to learn. And then obviously my social content's all free. Mm -hmm. You know, the Gary Vee style, like everything's mm -hmm. free. I want people to learn. And I don't pitch or push for people to come join the groups. I use the money that comes from that. And then I do the, my world's largest toy drive. Okay. And so like my $200 a month program, all that money goes to the world's largest toy drive. Okay. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching for 100K. Or just raised $1.2 million in one post Sheesh. going to the world's largest toy drive. And so the amount of toys we're going to, we broke the Guinness Book World Records last December. The, this is our 10 year anniversary of the toy drive. So now I'm like, it's you know, really the largest toy drive. It's not just a name. Yeah. It's SoFi really Stadium. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah. Wow. Like, it's huge. Huge. When so is just, that? Is it this year? Yeah. Well, when ten is year, it? 10 year anniversary in December. December? Yeah. So you're going to do a SoFi? Mm -hmm. wow. Well, I don't know if we'll do a SoFi again because we did, we did it already there. Um, but we're doing multiple cities. Last year we did uh, LA and Salt Lake City. And so this year, we're going to do like three, four, five cities, maybe even more. Yeah, yeah. see, just going to those events, like the conversations are priceless, like just networking and rubbing shoulders with those people that make, you know, this much money that has reached so much success. It's yeah, worth it. It was there and this then, weekend. We just sick. did it. Oh, you, you, I love all Den's events. They've been elevator nights, 100 mil mastermind. And you and you gain like a lot of like insight from Absolutely. other people. It's crazy, My right? My favorite is the charity events, you know, to see okay. like, bro. It's the Guinness it. World Record of toys given away. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen images. I was like, nah, this is not just a name. It's what was it? insane. It's really the largest. Wheeler after yeah. 18 wheelers pulling up. 162,000 toys. I mean, they're not just like some punk little toys. They're just like Mike Tyson, you know, punching bags. Yeah, like and like PS5s big, and like real Yeah, PS5s, just big, huge toys for these kids. And you see all these kids just lighting up. Yeah, with joy it's a blessing, bro. Because it's Christmas. Yeah. Like a like real Christmas. Women are coming up with like these big, huge shopping bags yep. and these carts wow. filled to the top. I've, I've seen, I've seen videos, images. I was like, this, this is insane. Yeah, <laughs> like how many trucks and like the, like you said, the toys yeah. on there. Now not just like Fisher Price yeah. tricycles. They're like, how many people were there? You think? 
Just oh, rough. Gosh, I don't even know. Thousands. But we have... So there's... Trina's Kids Foundation is who we do it with. They have 400 Latin American families that come there every year for the last nine years. Okay. All the extra toys, which is basically anything above 1,200 to 1,600 toys, we take to Watts Foundation with a guy named Styx. He takes it around the city of Watts and gives it out to the families there. And then on top of that, we take it to children's hospitals and ship it out mm. to homeless shelters, et cetera. And so it all started at Hubble Studio in downtown LA okay. with Trina's Kids Foundation, eight of us on the floor wrapping toys nine years ago. Then there's 30 like of us, hands on. then there's 40, literally, yeah. yeah. And so now it just keeps evolving to get more and more people involved uh, to make it bigger. But also the same concept. I'm not out there pitching people to donate to the toy drive. I want other people to replicate the toy drive. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You do a toy drive in yeah. Philadelphia and Atlanta and Baltimore and New York and El Salvador, wherever you are in the world, it doesn't take money. Yeah. It takes time, energy, and community. Yeah. You rally together like, hey, you come over to my event on this Friday. Hey, come bring toys on Friday. Hey, bring toys on Friday. Go get local offices to bring toys on Friday. And all of a sudden, 200 people show up with toys. You got a toy drive. Yeah, like everyone's everyone's involved. It's, right. it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like best community. It's our, we pride ourselves on uh, giving back to the community like at the highest at the highest priority because it, it comes back tenfold. Of course. Uh, you're just blessing, blessing the, uh, you know, less fortunate or people that you understand their, their struggles. Mm -hmm. They can't. A lot of people can't like, afford certain, you know, certain things right. like toys for even Christmas. Some people have empty Christmas, Christmases. So what you're doing is is crazy blessing, crazy blessing. What, what inspired you to do all that? So I started my charity for the homeless 10 years ago. This is also 10 year anniversary, making backpacks for the homeless with 150 items inside. That's called the Model Citizen Fund. The concept was I wanted people to replicate a charity without donating to me. So okay. I cover all costs. There's, it's a, I call it a 0% charity, meaning there's no cost for overhead, marketing, staff, nothing. I pay for all that. And the backpacks have 150 items inside, half food and drinks, half is supplies, a watch, a poncho, sleeping bag, okay. things like that. I have an entire list on the website of exactly what's inside the backpack. Okay. So you can do it. So all the backpacks are identical? Yes. Okay. But I designed it so that people could replicate it. Mm. They don't need to buy my backpacks for the homeless. They can make it with a Ziploc bag or a backpack, yeah. a duffel bag, whatever they want in Dallas, Texas, in Fort Worth. Virginia, wherever you are on the planet, okay. you can make Ziploc bags, you can make backpacks the same way that I'm doing it. And so I wanted a charity that had a very basic cause and effect. I'm going to put items in the backpack, I'm going to give it to the homeless people, women abuse shelters or teen abuse shelters. You guys can do the exact same thing. The toy drive, you can go do a toy drive. Thanksgiving food drive, I don't need you to donate to my Thanksgiving food drive, I want you to do a Thanksgiving food drive. Yeah. And so the reason I'm so visual about charity because there's a lot of stigma people are like oh if you post about charity you're doing it for the wrong reason yeah i'm doing it so you copy me yeah that's why i'm doing it let me yeah, be there's a heavy stigma with that like especially if you make a certain amount of money people think like you know i'm just having a charity just tax write-offs yeah. but you're telling people like i'm not posting checks i'm posting yeah. feeding people I'm not posting it for clout. I want people to replicate me. Yeah. I want, that, that's what I care it's just going to help everything else. You just want everybody, everyone to get, like, a, increase the community to give back. Yeah. We so. should do something like that. Maybe collaborate or something. Do maybe do a big shoe drive or something. Let's go. Like, uh, that would be massive with our community and our fan base. I know we can get thousands of sneakers. Yep. Yeah. We're with it. We'll take super pride in it. In it. I want to go back to um, the events because we were just talking about it at the other store. Like, because we don't really know what the Met Gala is, but we hear how much people pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? Wait, how like, much do people pay? They're like 30, 50K really? just to go. Yeah. Like, everybody. Yeah. Like, everyone that you see go, yeah. they pay that. Like, yeah. Kim K, all in it, they pay. I was wondering what's going on inside. <laughs> Like you see this, you know, everyone just you know, dress nice yeah. and you take content, but there's something going on inside the gallery. Have you guys ever been to the Met Gala? No, not my style. Um, I was just curious, like, is there a conversation the going on? Is it like it? similar, it's similar it's to your event? It's supposed to be for charity. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be for charity. I'm not sure what happens inside. It's yeah, usually, I was just, I was it's just probably just a dinner. That's, it's usually things like that are mostly the outside is meant to be the, the show for all the press and the media, which they did a great job again yesterday. Um, but ultimately, the... The hard part with high-end charities is you don't know the overhead. Yeah. Because they got to pay for the production of that event. Okay. So let's say they get 30K, 50K ahead times 500 people, whatever mm -hmm. the number is. That's a lot of money, right? Yeah. That's 12 to $15 million that they raise. But to throw the Met Gala probably cost them four or five million bucks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? The production and is very So expensive. the profit, I was always wondering, so if there, there, there is profit and that goes what, to the next event or the is it our prizes? Technically, the, profits, the profit is technically supposed to, the proceeds are supposed to go to a charity. Okay. Charity, yeah. And so I don't know the behind the scenes of how much they raise or how much their overhead is, but that looks like a serious production. Like that serious is, oh, production. Yeah. I always money. wonder, I was like, you just see photos, people dress nice. So can but anyone just go to these events? No. Not, not, that, not that one, no. Not that one? No. Oh, no. so you got to get invited, and then once you get invited, you start to pay. Yeah, you yes. have to have a certain Damn. amount of, you have to have a business <laughs> or a certain level of success, celebrity, then they invite you. 
then you pay, then you go in there, you can meet, like, you know, you have conversations and network opportunities. Uh, like, that's what made you bring it up, because, like, you have events that people pay just for the, um, the networking the, the that's priceless. They're, yeah, they're paying 100 grand to go to my event to network with other people. Yeah. And on Saturday, we threw a charity poker tournament. And then the money from the charity poker tournament went to an orphanage in Mexico. Okay. And they saw the video because we did it again last year and they saw we literally built the orphanage out and we added a shelter. We added like a, a kitchen. We add, like we showcased how much where their money went to. The money from this weekend, from Saturday, is going to build them a, a soccer field, not just for the kids part of our orphanage, but now the community can use the soccer field. Okay. And we're building a playground next to it that the kids can use in the community. So like I like visual charities. Yeah. It's it's obviously important to raise money for cancer and uh, breast cancer and a Makes lot of there's, there's important ones that are out there, but those also get hundreds of millions or billions of dollars raised for them. Yeah. I'm not raising hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm able to raise six figures and seven figures for mm -hmm. things, and so I want things that have a true cause and effect that people can see quickly. Yeah, you and can see like build a field, build like a, a, a you know warehouse or something that, that you can fit, vis physically see instead of right. like based on the research, cancer research stuff. Right. Which is good, but I get it's what you're still important, saying. but that you can just write a check to, right? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not something that you're gonna go like throw a cancer related event. You're just gonna donate 500 bucks or thousand bucks or 10 grand, whatever you can afford to donate. That's a donation that's important. Usually it's just something that's personal to you. Like yeah. if a family member has something that has leukemia or Alzheimer's, et cetera, you're gonna probably yeah. wanna donate to that. Makes it's sense. hard to throw an event for that outside of a charity dinner. Makes sense, makes sense. And so I try to do things that people, my goal is to make people replicate charity. It's not about my charity specifically. Okay. This, the half a dozen charity events you see me do are so people copy it. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. And then I was wondering, are there huge tax breaks or tax write-offs for doing these things? Yeah, so oh. it's only up to a certain amount of your, your income for the year. So okay. technically you can only write off, in, depending on your state, that's called up to 5% of your gross income for the year, which is still a lot, and it's better than giving it to the government. Yeah. You can now donate to the charity. Uh, and that message needs to be spread on a state-by-state -state level that you are able to donate, and you can research it for your own state, a certain percentage that's a write-off, complete write-off. Complete, yeah. So if you make 50 grand a year, 2,500 bucks a year, you should be donating rather than paying that 2,500 bucks in taxes. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. A lot of people don't learn know that, um, that you could... They, people look at taxes as like... A huge money rip off thing like but there's ways around it to you know create like you know commu uh, public housing or right. something to get back to the community exactly. where you get certain breaks yep yeah learn a lot today man because you're, um, you're a legend i want to i want to learn something for you real quick who what is the the you know, most like feared situation you've been in with an animal i know you posted certain things but i know certain things that we don't know <laughs> <laughs> like well, that's not in the public that's eye. not in the public <laughs> i know you have some crazy encounters yeah, I want to know, like, what, like in your you opinion, fear your life ever? Yeah. yeah, all the time. Have to. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, all the time. It's a lion. <laughs> Every trip. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things I can't talk about, like, okay, on camera, because one of the people that were there, because it's a dead giveaway. Oh, okay. You know, if you scroll my content and you like put two and two together, I don't want to get them in trouble. I don't want to get the get animals it. in trouble. You know, but like. I've been messed up a couple of times. Tell us one juicy one. I'm, I, just, I, I want to know. I, I use my imagination to think like yeah, he had to I have some I, was, I, I, I broke my foot with the animal and it yeah. was so bad that if I went to the hospital, they would have like, what happened? You know, uh, I had to tell them what happened. And then the person with the animal would get in trouble. They take the animal. Okay. And it would go all on the press and news yeah. and make the animal look bad even though it was my fault. Okay. You so know? do you just take that L? Like, and you yeah, I just went to the vet. I went to the vet and okay. I told him, like, you know, x ray me, stitch me up, give you some. That's, <laughs> so that's, the hospital. There's, there's no time. insurance for that giveaway. There's no know? insurance for what you do. Yeah. There's no insurance. See, your, li your life's on the line. <laughs> life's on the line. You yeah. can't even, like. That's I mean, that King Cobra video is the most scary video, like, I've ever seen. Yeah, that trip almost died once that's or twice. That's crazy, though. That's a big, big, huge thing. Yeah, about like, well, like eight months ago, I was in Borneo. It's like Indonesia. It's way over there. Um, and, uh, Hanging out with these little these little Indonesian guys, you know, they're, they're short, they're small, okay. but they're fast. Yeah. So as soon as I got off the plane, we start messing with these cobras, and uh, you know, the ego in me is like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna hang out with this cobra. Yeah. And I saw how fast a wild king cobra was, and how fast he had to move to get away from it. <laughs> I probably got bit. First thing I said, <laughs> oh, you, you, you're done. Yeah, and then those cobras, so, toast. Uh, those king cobras, like, uh, you see one, they will come to you. They not, not like necessarily all okay. snakes want to get away from you. Okay, you know, but we like to catch snakes. Yeah. So when you, you catch a snake, especially a king cobra, if you get close enough, you touch it. He's like, I got something for you. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> I, I I've watched that video 30 times and I still get nervous and I know what's going to happen. I still yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa. crazy. You can't avoid his content. Your content is everywhere on all the internet. Everybody like, you look at one animal, uh, someone does his, um, does anything with animals, you immediately jump in your algorithm and you see all your videos on a sport page and you could just get like lost in like a, uh, like a rabbit, rabbit hole, hole yeah. just looking at everything yeah. like this is crazy so hey like i said again big respect because I, I, i'm scared of frogs little frogs <laughs> i'll face a lion before i run to a frog <laughs> really? I, always, really? I, had, like, I had a childhood <laughs> i had a childhood uh yeah, it's it's PTSD, <laughs> like from my childhood, like frog used to hop on me. I was too scared. I'll face up a dog, pit bull, lion, but That's frog. Funny, man. But, yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. Big frog. respect, bro. Of course, bro. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, one last question before we end this pod. Uh, you had mentioned um, angel investing and yep. you're doing 40 companies. I'm in the stage of my life where I'm doing those angel mm -hmm. checks now. Um, what do you look for in a company when you're investing? Yeah. Uh, first thing first is the founder. So that's why I'm always going to bet on the person because. The company, the product, it can adapt and change, but the person's what I'm betting on. So I don't care if you're selling shoes or couches or podcast mics, I would bet on you, right? I know you're yeah. gonna figure it out regardless. So betting on the founder is the first thing. Next thing is, does anybody care? Yeah. Like, is this product that someone cares? And you can tell if they care because people vote with their wallets. Meaning, mm -hmm. if a company already has 100K, 200K, 300K in sales, I know that people care. Yeah. That's a big check mark for me. Mm -hmm. If they have zero dollars in sales, I'm guessing, I'm hoping, I'm wondering, and so is the founder because they don't actually know until they're in the market. Okay. But once you start to have a couple hundred grand in sales and specifically over a million bucks in sales. Psh, market yeah. validation. Yes. The next thing is, is it scalable? Like how big can it get? Oh, yeah, that's key. Can they open up a bunch more shoe stores? Can they yeah. open up? Can they scale their acai bowl chain? Can they sell more hats? Can they sell more podcast mics or furniture? Is it a scalable market? And are they the people that can do it? Is this the guy or girl that can go out there okay. and do it? And then can I help? Okay. Like if you're doing heart surgeries, God bless you, I can't help you do more heart surgeries. You're selling t-shirts with hearts on them? Mm -hmm. Let's go, right? I can <laughs> yeah. help you sell a lot of t-shirts with hearts on them. And so I look for those aspects. The main thing though is the founder. I wanna, really wanna bet on that person. And then the product, I want to make sure it's something that I can help and that people care about. But what about what about like the industry? Like you said, heavy on the founder. What if the industry is like declining? Do you factor that in at all? That doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Yeah. And what industries are you investing? Is it the restaurant chains or is it consumer facing marketplaces? So or it's what is it? So is I have it NFT related or what? The answer is yes to everything you just said. So last year, I have a group called Elevator Syndicate. I have 846 investors in my group. Last year we did $44 million of investments, all three to six million bucks at a time, mostly into food and beverage brands and consumer products. Mm. And the reason for it is food and beverage brands get pretty big multiples, you know, big valuations, and they get acquired early because the yeah, big quick, guys yeah. like to scoop them up. eat them up, yeah. Because they want their shelf space and they want their distribution. They know if a company's doing 10, 20, 30, 40 million, let's buy them yeah. and we can help them get way bigger because we're already selling to 100,000, 200,000 mm. stores. So if they're selling in 8,000 stores, let's buy them early. Yeah, big fish eat little fish. Yeah, Always. so I did a lot of food and beverage brands. I did do NFTs. You know, me and Adam Weitzman, we bought a, a million dollars that big time did, land. Um, the Logan Paul thing, right? Didn't you guys do that? Yeah. Or the so, 99 original? Or yeah. Was it? So my friend Travis bought, we bought uh, the the one to get onto his podcast. We had like a whole bidding award to get in. It was a pretty fun experience. Um, so we bought that. That was, I think, 300K or 350K. And then... Logan wears that Pokemon, yeah, the yeah. $5 million card. Travis and I bought a million dollars of that $5 million card that he wears. Oh, you wow. know when he goes to WWE, he wears that necklace? Yeah, the Charizard, right? Yep. Yeah. I just, I'm betting on him, right? I'll bet on Logan. We tried to invest in Prime. He didn't, you know, even on the podcast. I tried too. I yeah. told the manager <laughs> Jeff yeah. and all of them, but. Yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't need it. They don't um, need it, yeah. We, we, during the podcast, we tried live to try to invest into it. He's like, yeah, yeah, let me think about it. Um, <laughs> That's a probably no valuable or a billion. Like, their numbers are yeah. insane right now. But, but in a lot of places, though. But it's betting on the founder. Like, yeah. I know that Logan and KSI are going to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. going to have the eyeballs. By the way, there's plenty of influencers. I would never invest in them. Mm -hmm. I get pitched to them left and right, morning, mm -hmm. noon, and night. And I don't invest in most influencers because I don't believe that they're going to work and focus the way that Logan's focusing on, yeah, on Prime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't leave the house without Prime. Yeah. He doesn't get on airplanes without Prime. Mm -hmm. they, Tarzan was with him in Australia filming a Prime commercial last month. Like he's going to different countries to film it. Yeah, like yeah. Prime is his, his, like right. his heart. His most life, entrepreneurs right. aren't, most of the influencers aren't doing that. They're not. They're like, they'll like make a shoe brand and then go do a makeup brand and they'll go do a food brand. Like, they chase money instead right. of actually focusing on that in one niche. Like, that's yes. why I respect um, Nelk Boys and with sure. Happy Dad. They're killing with Happy Dad. Because they're so, they don't they're leave the house without Happy that. Dad. Yeah. yeah, they're so hands on. They, they, they throw it in it. everything they do. It's all in our, all their content. They rep it, they bleed it. They, that's all they do. And they and they have a business guy with John Shahidi and his brother. Like, we did a video with the, him. They're, they're out there working. And you, so 
the influencer is going to make it famous. You have the business guys with John and his brother like that are going to go out there and make sure it's a good operation. Mm -hmm. They're getting support from the community that other people are now posting in. Dana White, all these guys are behind it. Like that's a brand to invest into. Yeah, once it becomes a thing like that we all are familiar with, then it opens up a lot of doors. They drilled it so much that you can't avoid you. You, but you, you, you need, think Happy Dad with Nook Boys? But all the time. you, but you need all those missing. You need all those parts. You can't just be the influencer no. and not have the business savvy. Oh guy. no. You know I mean, I've seen it with Face Clan. Face Clan, they was like a bunch of gamer guys when we first when I first met them. Right. Now they got like a real business team behind them, and they they still stay the same, you know, the same niche, but they expanded it into expanded a real too. business instead of like a hobby. So now e gaming is crazy. They're making so much money off just their uh, stock crashed though. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. I know it did. Yeah, that's just unfortunately, bad. there's too many chefs in that kitchen. So yeah, too many. Too many, too many yeah, hands. That's the issue. Yeah. yeah. No, no direction. I, I want to, uh, before we leave, uh, NFTs, it's, uh, it's a tricky thing because it's going up and down. Mm -hmm. You're still heavily evolving in NFTs? Yeah, so the NFT market is much different now. Uh, it, it's not going up or down, it's just going down. Yeah. Just down, right? However, yeah. the ones that have someone big behind it, like really big behind it that cares, is going to work out in the long run. Like when you have someone like Gary Vee with Gary Vaynerchuk, like you can bet on him. He's yeah. going to figure it out and he's going to keep building the brand because he cares because his name's online. When Logan has his, you know his name's online. Stevie Oki has his name on the line. Like guys that are behind it, a big artist that has their name online, they're gonna keep pushing it. The people that are just selling you a bear or a rabbit or a giraffe that's yeah. just an entity, there's no chance of that anymore. People got burned, people lost hundreds of so millions of dollars money, last yeah. year over that. And so the market is different. However, the actual function of the letters NFT, a non-fungible token, that is not going anywhere. Okay. Household name brands are finally getting it. Mm -hmm. okay. They're not making a monkey or a bear or a giraffe or a zebra. They're making a functional thing that you can use it to go to a live event. Okay, or she okay. can get a Chanel bag. It's that tech layer yes. right there. That's yeah. powerful. Yes. The, the actual three function. component, the blockchain component. Like the, yeah, the root yeah. component. Yeah. Like, like crypto is going to be a thing once Star everyone Starbucks realizes. is doing NFT. That Starbucks? makes sense because now if you go to their coffee shop and you can use their NFT, that makes sense. Okay. The household name brands are finally starting to use it and you're going to see a lot more companies copy that for function, not for art. I know yeah. it hurts people to hear that. Like the function NFT is much more important than the art. I've said that always. I said well, NFTs will only serve a, pur pur a purpose with high functionality. Yes. Like the, the graphics and the, the art is cool. Right. But if it has no functionality, even with crypto, if you can't use it anywhere or like trade it, it's hard to invest in. It's hard Correct. to gain and use it. So I see a lot of people just, just you know, I feel have like a lot that of money. whole hype transfers over to like AI. Mm -hmm. Are you involved with AI? Uh, how, uh, do you, how do you? How do you both of you guys feel about AI? Uh, it is scary because it could end the world. I really <laughs> think so too. Uh, <laughs> I said on last podcast, it, it can end the world. It because can? I'll, I'll, they can't. It can't unless they create a, uh, I don't know, a hundred pound robot that can run forty miles per hour. We just shouldn't fear it. Man, they're, they're, <laughs> the, the, when I say end the world, it means. If robots can create robots, we're screwed. Okay. Luckily, yeah. they're not gonna like have like a warehouse full of supplies to go make each other, like to go make a bunch yeah, of robots. Exactly. So it's not that simple. Um, but we can lose millions of jobs. And, jobs, oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And that can hurt the world. But really I also badly. said as well, we could lose a mi we, and if, uh, AI will help. You know, a lot of jobs, um, you know, disappear. But us as humans, we'll, we'll figure out a way to use them. To create more jobs. Yes, we I will think. create a lot more jobs. My biggest concern for the last few years, AI and in robot technology in general, is if fast food restaurants become all robot based or AI based, you're talking about four to seven million people that just work at McDonald's, yeah. let alone Jack and Box, Burger King, Internet, wow. and all those places. Where are they going to go? They don't, they're unskilled labor for the most part. Yeah. Where are they going to go work at? And so if that happens, or if you have semi trucks all of a sudden are all powered by Tesla, you're talking about two to five million jobs of, of truck well, drivers. Yeah. Where are yeah. they going to go work? Yeah. Where are two to five man. million truck drivers going to work? It's scary. It's scary. I just, I'm just, I just always play like uh, the devil's advocate. Like you're trying to be optimistic against it to see like, you know, everyone lose. These truckers, like you say, will lose their jobs. But I feel like those truckers will find another industry maybe or to find a way to use the AI like that you know, self-automated truck to scale something else. Scale, like We'll find a way to use it to the, our advantage maybe. The problem is... The, the ones that are working at the convenience store, or they're working at the fast food restaurant or working at semi truck driver, they're not going to use AI. Yeah. And that's the, that's the hard part is that they're going to have to find another unskilled labor job yeah. for the most part. And there's not going to be as many of them because of this. Yeah. And if, uh, if whole markets go away, then it gets really scary. How, how about, how about, all right, so what if we, what if you use AI <laughs> to like, you know, if there's a cheetah, you could, you could find a way to, you know, I don't know, two robots to like circle in a, it makes your job easier. Is that it? I personally like AI. Okay. Um, it's just, I feel it's a development from humans and 
computers and technology, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, like I seen some local images on not just recent images online of people merging like animals together, but yeah. it looks so real. Oh, you okay. know, and I've also seen AI create real like Nat Geo just posted three photos of a cheetah. And like one of them's I AI, and yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't know which one it that's, is. Yeah, right. that's got to have some type of goodness to it. Okay. you know, I mean, it may suck for the photographers that are going out trying to get these shots, you know. But from what I understand, you can make a whole. If I want to say, hey, Chat GPT or whatever AI, teach me about the King Cheetah, and it gives me a right. list and all these photos, and I post it, and no one knows it. It even looks, yeah, fake, and it's an actual fake image. And it's all real information, and you blast it out, and it gets. It favors the algorithm right now yeah. as well too. Uh -huh. So if you're, for me, I like it. Yeah, you know? I like I like it too. To until, until I don't want to like it. Yeah, you don't want to, but yeah. you have to because you could use it. But like ChatGPT, like if kids like, you know, uh, middle school kids, they use it for like their their work assignments. Of course, stuff. that 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 uh, you know decreases the intelligence of a lot of kids. Even an iPhone, like kids are less social. Uh, than when when I was growing up, they they sit in the room and you know talk to their they'll talk to someone in the room on Instagram right. versus like communicating and they're so um, impatient now. I see with kids now they, they have technology so is advancing way too fast. Think yeah, about too fast. It. Yeah. This wasn't in, in existence 15 years ago. Right? Yeah, it's less patient. I would tell kids now. I'm like, we didn't have um, the internet back in the day. GPS. Y'all don't, so don't go to each other's used to drive. Yeah, yeah. Map <laughs> quest. <laughs> yeah, map quest and print the paper out. <laughs> or like when you, if you pass a stop sign, you went too far. Uh, or, <laughs> VCRs or, and DVDs. Like uh, this is a lot of says. If you think about it, a lot has evolved in the last 15 years. Now imagine the next 15 years. Well, how I'm much saying, is going to? We evolve. didn't get left behind though. That's that's the only reason I'm saying we could adapt. That's why we shouldn't fear AI. We yeah, should actually welcome it and learn from it because either way, it's going to take over. It's going to take over. It's going to be a thing. If you don't adapt, same thing with the content and sneakers yeah. or whatever you're yeah, gonna, block, you're gonna block, die block yeah. we're humans so we, have, we have to die. die yeah i will say I'm one thing it out. outside of the, <laughs> Me too. I, 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 figure it. I know i said a lot of doom and gloom i will say one thing about something like chat gbt the average salary for a chat gbt engineer like someone that does the prompting is three hundred and thirty five thousand dollars wow <laughs> there are very few companies that pay anybody even their ceos yeah. and presidents three hundred thirty five thousand. Mm -hmm. so don't feel like oh my god everything's be chat gbt it's not it's not yeah go to any midwest state they're not using AI. They're not using ChatGPT. I can't get them to use Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So let's All just right. be clear. Like we're not yeah. gonna have like robots running around Alabama. It's yeah. not gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So when when there is the gloom and doom about what's gonna happen, millions of jobs are gonna go away. In certain sector sectors, in, cities, in certain right? cities, yeah. it can happen. But we're never gonna go to Fort Worth, Texas, and worry uh, about I'm robots sure. serving as burgers. These not big companies happen. don't yeah, even pilot over there. Like, if, I don't know if you've seen those little robots where, like, uh, for food deliveries. Have yeah. you seen those? Yeah, just yeah. They're not going to have that yeah. in no random city in no. Texas. It just, it doesn't mean, it's, it's not even worth it for them. It's, it's too far, also. These it's places, far, yeah. these states it are only humongous. works, like, in major cities, like, uh, like New York, LA, Miami, New York, uh, maybe uh, Texas or, like, uh, Miami. Those major, like, high-volume cities, that's when you'll see AI becoming a huge thing. Like everyone using it for like work or like using the tools. But like you said, like in smallest towns, we, we, we should feel safe. <laughs> no robots, no I, I rocked oh, I robot like a couple weeks ago. And that movie was made in 2000 and other way, 2008, long time ago. And I'm like, <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, the Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger was like 35 years ago. Exactly. You know? So people been thinking about this forever. At least, at least y'all are good in Temecula away from the world <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, but appreciate both y'all kicking it with us today us. man wish you, guys, wish you guys but nothing but the best everyone out there make sure to go check them out on all their social media channels make sure to hit the subscribe button like this video comment and on that note thank you for kicking it with cool kicks yes, peace sir. let's go buy some sneakers go buy, buy some sneakers <laughs> do not play with dinosaurs and cheetahs and <laughs> lions <laughs> thank you man